Hello everybody, today we are going to discuss Box and Cox by Joseph Madison Morton and this is a farce and the original play was written in French so it's an adaptation from that original play. So first I must tell you what is farce. So farce is a comic play in which uh, things are like small things are exaggerated in such a manner that uh, it produces comedy, boisterous kind of comedy, slapstick comedy it produces. So such a kind of play uh, which is written with the purpose of inducing uh, say uh, horse laughter or such guffawing. So such a kind of play is actually Box and Cox and now this title Box and Cox is uh, being uh, is used to refer to such kind of things where the characters uh, perform in an uh, alternating manner or so because here in this play that kind of thing happens. So uh, let's see uh, that what uh, which how many characters are there and what is actually uh, what actually happens in the play so the characters are john box uh, james cox and mrs bouncer these are the three characters so i'll uh, take you into a uh, into a bit detail of this play means what actually the original play was so i'll tell you all about that that because in other versions some of the portions have been removed or deleted but I'll tell you the whole thing uh, that up to what is there in the later versions and what the original version contained. So <clears throat> John Box is a printer. Printer here means he uh, worked for a newspaper, a daily and so uh, he would always be on night shifts, like it his was a night duty. James Cox was a hatter, so he worked in a hat shop and his was a day duty. And Mrs. Bouncer was a lodging housekeeper in London. Now apart from these three, there are two more characters which I'll introduce later because that is, uh, they are there in the original version only. In some of the later versions, these two characters are not there. So, now uh, how actually, uh, or what the thing is, how it starts. Mrs. Bouncer has rented a room, uh, a single room to two people. And they, even uh, like, they not knowing that somebody else is also uh, living in the same room or using the same room so they were unaware of this fact that uh, Box didn't know about Cox and Cox didn't know about Box so it was in such a manner that she managed and it was all out of her greed she like wanted to make most out of a single room just uh, uh, renting it to two people so getting double rent from a single room so that was her uh, purpose behind that so it was nothing but greed but the things turn out to be very comical and humorous uh, for us so what happens that mr cox is there in the room so it's a morning time and mr cox has to leave for his shop and box would be returning from his night duty so Cox was there in the room and he was uh, preparing to leave, he was to go to his uh, work, he was to go to his shop, so he was uh, getting ready for that, he was in a hurry and he calls or shouts for uh, Mrs. Bouncer, says that uh, the bolster, bolster you know, as a, as a pillow, a round ki a kind of pillow, uh, long and rounds uh, we can say that kind of pillow is uh, called a bolster so he called uh, mrs bouncer and said that this pillow is of no use it has only what uh, fed some feathers on the sides and middle it is nothing i'll read out the things that how he exactly describes that pillow here uh, he says that i can't say uh, I did uh, Mrs. B. 
I should feel obliged to you if you could accommodate me with a more more protuberant bolster so he is demanding a good bulgy we can say uh, bolster and he said uh, Mrs. B the one I have seems to me to have about a handful and a half of feathers at each end so as I just said that he is complaining that it is only just some handful of feathers on both ends and nothing whatever in the middle so in middle there is nothing so that's what he is complaining of and apart from that he has some other complaints as well uh, he talks of the coal that coal is perhaps like running out faster so he says that my coals go remarkably fast Mrs. B so that's how um, they address uh, Mrs. Bouncer so Mrs. B my coals uh, are running out remarkably fast so she actually just uh, looks at Cox and says, Ms. Cox, it's not the case only with the calls because there are other problems as well. So, Ms. Bouncer, but I have lately observed a gradual and steady increase of evaporation among my candles, wood, sugar and matches. So, what he's saying that not just the calls but what my uh, wood, my candle, my sugar and even matches they too are evaporating so how it all uh, is happening so Miss B or Miss Bouncer says I you surely don't suspect me Mr. Cox so that's what she said that so the reply to this is really quite a good one amusing one I don't say I do Mrs. B only I wish you distinctly to understand that I don't believe it's the cat so it means he is indirectly saying that I suspect you uh, Mrs. Bouncer that uh, because he is saying that I don't believe that it's a cat so it means like in a taunting manner in a roundabout manner uh, he is trying to say that it's Miss Bouncer herself who in uh, his absence uses uh, his room and uses all those things and that's why they are running out fast. So they talk in that way and then finally what uh, she asked that if you have any other grudges or any other complaints or so. So he says that yes you um, there is you know kind of smoke. Uh, in my room always he complains of some uh, smoke of cigar uh, he says that I frequently find my apartment full of smoke so she said well I suppose chimney so he said the chimney doesn't smoke tobacco at least complaining about the smell of tobacco so he said the chimney doesn't smoke tobacco so I'm speaking of tobacco smoke must be I hope Miss Bouncer you are not guilty of cheroots or cubas means he is asking about uh, cigar that if she uh, smokes cigars or so so she said not I indeed Miss Cox not partial to a pipe like asking uh, if uh, some pipe or so so of course she denied that she uh, she um, didn't use any uh, such kind of thing uh, cheroots or cubas or even a pipe or so and then she said that uh, the person who is was occupied the attic attic is what a room on the upper side of um, a house we can say a small room or space below the roof that is called attic so she said that it might be the person who occupies the attic uh, so he is a smoker and it might be because of that and so how uh, like how, how is it possible that one who is living up the smell of tobacco or the smoke would come down she said that when he would smoke like he might be smoking sitting near the fireplace and so uh, through the chimney the smoke uh, comes down and so so uh, she uh, like makes an excuse because she had no other uh, thing to uh, make an excuse or she had no other excuses to offer actually so she says that it might be that the smoke comes down from the chimney so of course it was 
like uh, something unbelievable how could one believe that chimneys through which smoke uh, smoke goes up here through the chimney smoke is coming down so it was something incredible or unbelievable so fine okay all that happened and then uh what happens mr box comes in and he uh, actually uh, now they they meet on the staircase mr box and mr cox they meet at the staircase cox is going to the shop and box is coming back to his room so okay as usual uh, fine box entered the room and he uh, carried a chicken leg with him so in the later versions it is chicken leg in the original version it's a bacon so bacon is the fish of uh, sorry is the flesh of pig uh, from the back and sides which is taken that is called bacon so he put the rasher the slices actually on the gridiron and thought of having a nap and okay uh, so he went to have a nap there um, mrs uh, bouncer uh, just had a talk with him and she said that uh, the person living in the attic is uh, complaining of uh, the the smell of tobacco the smoke and all that so he said it's better that uh, you advise him to uh, find a room in some nearby parish or so because he was not going to leave of course so this how it happens the talks about the smoke and that Uh, by the way mr box he begged me to request you as a particular favor that you would not smoke quite so much so i like just making a point and saying that you would not smoke much that does he then you may tell the gentle hatter with my compliments that if he objects to the effluvia that is the smoke of tobacco he had better domesticate himself in some adjoining parish so he asks uh, mrs bouncer to advise him to find a room in some nearby parish in some nearby area so mrs bouncer actually was requesting him then uh, don't let me lose a uh, say a, a, a tenant in that way and of course Uh, he was not going to stop uh, smoking so he simply made it clear to uh, mrs bouncer so okay that happened now what happens when he goes to the shop the owner tells mr cox that he didn't want him for that day and so he can uh, he could enjoy a holiday uh, cox was happy uh, actually he was quite late he was 11 minutes and a half late and so he was trying to sneak into the shop but at that time the the owner came and said that uh, he could have a holiday he didn't want him for that day so he was happy thought of returning back and then so he uh, purchased what uh, he purchased mutton chop and thought okay that he would uh, come back to the room and would enjoy the mutton chop so he came back he uh, and when he came back he found what uh, all those things again just as box 2 had found that the room was being used by somebody the matches and candles all being used so he found that yes it was uh, being used and he thought of putting the mutton chop on to uh, on the gridiron so when he went, uh, found, tried to find a match Uh, the match box was empty even the last uh, the last match was used when he went to the grid and he found that it was already lit and uh, chicken leg uh, or originally as he said back in was on it so he got quite cross with that and he uh, just took it away uh, that chicken leg the back in away and put what uh, his mutton chop on that and then Uh, went away he took a key and open the door of the left hand side and slamming it he just went away so with that sound when he when the door was slammed so uh, with that sound what happened mr box who was 
having a nap, he um, got up and he thought it must be Mrs. Bouncer uh, and he got up and went to Gridiron to have a look at his uh, bacon. So when he uh, went there and saw that the bacon was not there and mutton chop had been put on Gridiron. So he got very angry and at that time what happened that uh, Mr. Cox also came back and they found each other there in the room and they got surprised and then they had a quarrel there uh, the each other yes both of them are quarreling so it's how uh, it happens let's see that who are you so what do you want here sir both are asking to each other if you come to that what do you want so same thing what do you want what do you want who are you what do you want here so uh, it's the printer it's the hatter so they are like they knew each other because they met uh, each other every morning invariably uh, on the staircase so they recognize each other oh the printer the hatter what do you want here why so uh, they they are telling each other like go to the attic so my attic sir your attic sir it's not mine it's yours so finally box uh, sorry cox got angry and said that i shall do you a frightful injury if you don't instantly leave my apartment and mr box of course why should he leave he also said your apartment you mean my apartment you contemptible hatter so both are getting angry and quarreling so uh, words uh, were coming out uh, like pots and pans uh, like uh, just spell mill out of each other and they were hitting with words so uh, cops also laughing and saying your apartment oh i like that and then he produces a slip so actually uh, both of them had the rent slip uh, to be produced to show or to prove that yes they were the real tenant so they produced slips the rent that they had paid uh, in the previous week so they produced and both had the slip so now how could they prove that one the other was not the tenant and how they could um, pull the man out so Finally, what they call Mrs. Bouncer, both of them, they call Mrs. Bouncer and Mrs. Bouncer comes to the room and she asks, what's the matter? Instantly remove that hatter, Mr. Box and Cox to immediately turn out that printer. So finally, uh, Mrs. Bouncer was left with no other choice and she had to agree that she had rented the room uh, to both and she was at the mercy of both so this is how the play ends in the later versions but in the former the original versions uh, it's not all over here they are quarreling they ask mrs bouncer to bring a revolver and then they say that is it loaded she says no um, then she then they say okay then bring some other weapon or so or like that and they quarrel and in between uh, finally they think they decide that why should we fight in quarrel it's not our fault it's all uh, the fault of mrs bouncer and there's one more character or say in fact two more characters um, are introduced at this point here and they are one i should say penelope and a wiggins And this Penelope Anne is a rich proprietress and she is the proprietress of bathing houses there uh, <clears throat> in London and bathing houses actually what uh, on beach uh, people are allowed to uh, like they it's a kind of arrangement uh, where people can change their dresses and so with curtains and roofs and such so that is bathing house and she was the proprietress of those bathing houses and what happens is actually mr box was 
uh, engaged to uh, Mrs. Uh, say, um, sorry, this Pendulop N.A. and she, uh, he actually somehow got rid of her uh, just making an excuse and uh, just uh, presenting that he actually committed a suicide. So in that way he got rid of uh, Penelope. And now here Mr. Cox, he too was uh, like going to have such a kind of thing. So what to do, how to get rid of that, that was the problem now. So they said, okay, let's play. Dice, uh, one who loses, will marry Penelope. Okay, fine, they agreed. They started playing. Every time they threw the dice, it would be six on uh, six for both. So they continued, it was no use. Finally, they turned to shillings that, okay, we'll toss the coins and uh, on the basis of that, on the basis of toss, we'll decide. But actually, it was uh, double-sided. Every time they tossed it, there was a head. So they couldn't decide that way as well. Finally, what happens, a letter comes from uh, Penelope and it said that uh, that Penelope has uh, drowned and has so died. So, okay, they were happy that now nobody will have to marry Penelope and um, the property will, they, they could have the property. So they started fighting over the property that I would have the property, I would have the property. But then uh, there comes another letter and says that she is all well and safe and there is no problem with her. She is all quite safe. Now, then they uh, were again in uh, trouble. So before this what happened, they came to a decision that, okay, uh, if uh, finally that will split the property, we can divide instead of fighting and quarreling, it would be better to divide the property. So that was, but then this letter comes that, okay, she is safe and fine and there is no problem. So they were again puzzled and troubled. Then what happens, there comes a vehicle and it was uh, perhaps Penelope in that and she comes and knocks on the door. So uh, they, uh, unable to understand what to do, they, they just go to the door and turning their back to it, they don't open the door. Finally what happens, she turns back and there was a letter again uh, to them and the letter said that she has decided to marry Mr. Knox. Yes, Mr. Knox. Uh, who was of her age and she uh, loves her so they had decided to marry. So in that way uh, both were free of her and they were happy and then actually meanwhile Mrs. Bouncer uh, had promised to arrange another room for one of them, um, back room and she had uh, gone to arrange the, make arrangements there in the room. But then what happens, they come to know or they realize that they were uh, long lost brothers and so they decided to uh, live in the same room and that that would not change the room and how it happens is actually one asks the other do you have that uh, strawberry mark on your hand so he said no oh then it means it's you and saying this they uh, come to know that yes they are brothers so again a comic type of ending has been made here so this is how the whole play ends and uh, really quite a humorous and comic one and the comedy is really good, good to read and good to uh, be staged, of course. So, this is how the whole thing works out. So, I hope uh, it's all clear to you. Might have understood uh, the things and the plot and the story. So, I'll come up with more such things, uh, more such poems and plays and stories for you. So, stay tuned, keep watching. Uh, till then, uh, thank you very much.